Minnie Mouse. Ah, the saccharine sweetheart of Mickey, a consummate charmer and global symbol of good-natured femininity. In other words, the perfect partner. Or is she? Exploring Minnie's early animated appearances reveals that beneath her polished exterior, an id-driven darkness lurks. Her relationship with Mickey is dysfunctional, to say the least, and full of vitriol. She humiliates him with other men, is amused by animal cruelty, mocks low-income people, tries endlessly to be a social climber, and prone to wild mood swings. Let's begin. Before Minnie and Mickey were an item, Mickey and Pete arrive simultaneously at her home to court her. Minnie selects Pete because he's got a car, a wealth status symbol compared to Mickey, who's arrived in a humble horse and buggy. Pete celebrates his anticipated conquest by rolling coal at Mickey, the universal sign of automobile masculinity. However, cartoon karma intervenes and Pete's car explodes. To Minnie, now Mickey is the more appealing suitor because owning any transportation is better than owning none. Mickey isn't phased about being Minnie's backup choice and seizes the opportunity to take her out on a date. And within moments of the ride starting, he's already triumphantly kissing her. Everything's going just great for Mickey until the flickering of his horse's tail interrupts his kissing session. Mickey comes up with a plan to resolve this issue. And together they share a laugh over the callous treatment of the poor horse. Hilarious. However, Cartoon Karma intervenes yet again and Mickey is hit in the face by the weight. So, in a gesture of performative masculine anger, Mickey stretches out the horse's neck as punishment, making the horse scream out in pain. But Minnie isn't bothered by this. No, instead it makes her smile, and she eagerly receives more of Mickey's kisses. The night goes on, and despite Mickey's earlier romantic success with Minnie, he blows it by being a clumsy dancer and stepping on her feet. Since all is fair in love and war, Pete sees an opportunity and swoops in to dance with Minnie. And as it turns out, he is an excellent dance partner. Mickey is humiliated and boiling with rage. In desperation, he places a balloon in his pants to make himself a better dancer. When Pete and Minnie get near, Mickey shoves Pete away and coerces Minnie into dancing with him. Her mood soon changes from reluctance to delight when she sees how much Mickey's dancing has improved. Of course, violence leads to more violence, and Pete retaliates by throwing a concealed switchblade he brought into the venue. The blade pops the balloon that was helping Mickey's dancing, and he crash lands on Minnie. Pete then reaches into Mickey's pants and shows the deflated balloon to Minnie, and she's furious. She rejects Mickey for his deception and dances the night away with Pete. Great. Some time passes, and a considerable reconciliation seems to have occurred between Mickey and Minnie. After a delightful afternoon of larking about the piano, Mickey presents Minnie with a gift. She opens it, and is shocked to find a dog bone. And she erupts. Not even giving Mickey a moment to explain this bizarre situation rationally, Minnie draws the worst possible conclusions. She launches into an all-out verbal assault and forcibly kicks Mickey and his dog out. Unbeknownst to her, of course, both of their pet dogs fooled around with the gift beforehand, removing the original item and replacing it with the bone. This incident is the first, and definitely not the last time, that Minnie's hair trigger temper sucks the oxygen right out of the room. It's only later when Minnie's dog confesses to the crime Mickey, you did it. that Minnie realizes she was in the wrong. Her siren-like call beckons Mickey back to suffer more mental anguish to which Mickey eagerly responds, his infatuation with her clearly overriding any sense of self-dignity. For now, the two mice are able to make up. Sometime later, Minnie has taken up work as a nanny to her two baby nephews, and Mickey now works as a steamroller driver. Minnie shows an escalating lapse of judgment when it comes to fulfilling her childcare responsibilities. First, she allows Mickey to tow the stroller with his steamroller. Then, at the conclusion of the ride, an overly amorous Mickey pursues Minnie, making her forget all of her duties. So, bored of Minnie's giggly absent-mindedness, her nephews slip away and take control of the steamroller. Much to Minnie and Mickey's horror, the children go on an absolute rampage with the machine. Minnie and Mickey are almost crushed, vital public infrastructure is destroyed, and a hotel is demolished. Despite this ordeal, Minnie and Mickey's relationship remains intact. 
Later, a former romantic partner of Minnie's drops by unexpectedly. Well, if it ain't my old sweetie, Minnie Mouse! And Minnie shamelessly parades the wealthier and taller Mortimer in front of a very jealous Mickey. Mickey? Oh, I want you to meet Mortimer. <laughs> Mortimer is loud, boisterous, and confident, and Minnie can't help but lovingly spoon-feed him custard. Mickey's anger is restrained and redirected towards his donut. This awkward picnic is soon interrupted when the group hears a bull in a nearby farmer's field. Mortimer decides to indulge in a bit of bullfighting just to thrill Minnie. And it works, too, because apparently nothing is more exciting than fighting wild animals. Bravo! Isn't he brave? Ha! A perfect scream! Mickey finally snaps and decides to sit next to his comparatively modest-looking car and fume. It's only when Mortimer abandons Minnie to be a victim of the charging bull that he provoked, which Mickey selflessly rescues her from, that Minnie appreciates Mickey again. The two mice reconcile again, with Mickey trying to keep the relationship together by making Minnie agree that she doesn't find Mortimer amusing anymore. Another incident sees Minnie baking a cake, whose delicious smell attracts Mickey. He requests a piece, but she doesn't really feel very giving. Which is weird, because he saved her life from being gored. I have nothing for loafers. Good day! So in exchange, Mickey agrees to clean her yard for a slice. He tries his best, but unluckily, our tornado soon forms and devastates the yard and surrounding area. Surprisingly, Minnie didn't hear any of this and kept on baking inside. With the cake complete, Minnie ventures outside to check on Mickey's progress and finally sees the destruction from the tornado firsthand. She's aghast and immediately decides to blame Mickey for it. Even though it's not his fault, Mickey doesn't have enough confidence to stand up for himself and submits to Minnie's wrath, perhaps because arguing with her would be more effort than just taking the abuse and moving on. Ultimately, Minnie is once again ruled by her emotions and would rather indulge her anger than see the truth of a situation. This time, her outburst is throwing the cake she just baked at Mickey. It's an act of someone who can't control their emotions in a worrying escalation of violence against a partner. It's not all bad, though. Perhaps seeking redemption, Minnie organizes a surprise birthday party for Mickey. Hiya, Minnie! How about a little... Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Of course, life is a series of never-ending defeats for Mickey. But life goes on. Minnie presents Mickey with his birthday gift, an electric organ. Mickey's sheepish about accepting such an expensive gift and demonstrates that he doesn't actually know how to play it. But Minnie soon shows that she can play it expertly and orders Mickey to dance around the room instead. Analyzing this scene, it's hard not to draw the conclusion that the gift was actually something Minnie wanted for mm, herself. And she acquired it by having all of their friends chip in for it, thinking it was a gift for Mickey. Minnie's inability to feel empathy for another perspective is also apparent in another episode. When Mickey is late to a scheduled date because he fell asleep, she calls him up to berate him. Mickey hurriedly puts on his fanciest clothes and rushes to get to the venue. Cartoon chaos ensues, and Mickey's in a trash can. Dazed and with his finest clothes in tatters, Minnie is delighted. It's revealed they're attending a themed costume party for people who have fallen on hard times. Through a 2022 perspective, attending an event where you're supposed to dress as someone suffering from poverty would be socially frowned upon, to say the least. That Minnie makes light of poverty by dressing up as someone who can't afford to maintain their clothes is yet another example that shows that she can't imagine perspectives other than her own, or how what she does makes others feel. Ultimately, Minnie Mouse is quite selfish, so why does Mickey put up with it? Oh, oh, you know, I'm just obsessed with you. Well, it's this doormat attitude from Mickey that has enabled Minnie's abusive behavior. One part of Minnie's behavior we've seen is an inability to recognize threats that could endanger her life. When enjoying a boat ride with Mickey, she sings him a song she wrote as a gift. A thoughtful gesture, sure, but perhaps a little egocentric. Unfortunately, the boat is pulled into a powerful rip current. Mickey desperately tries to keep the boat steady, but she seemingly doesn't notice and just keeps singing. Mickey works frantically to keep both of them alive, while Minnie, so absorbed and marveling at herself as a performer, just continues singing. Finally, the danger passes. 
they're both back where they started, and the song has concluded. Mickey thinks he can finally relax. Did you like it? Liked it? I loved it! What was your favorite part? I loved it all. In fact, I, I, I'd love to hear it again. My pleasure, my treasure. And this time, you won't have to save us, and you can finally listen. So, it was all a ruse. But what was the purpose of subjecting Mickey to the stress of trying to keep them both alive? Was it some crazy test of love and devotion to her? Does she like toying with him because she knows he's afraid of her temper? What if Mickey admitted he wasn't paying attention to the song? Would she have exploded in anger at him? What Minnie and Mickey's relationship has revealed is that Mickey is always walking on eggshells to avoid an outburst from Minnie, because occasionally he gets to kiss her, I guess. Minnie, meanwhile, uses Mickey as an emotional punching bag and seems to be keeping him around because her other suitors didn't stay. And perhaps, perhaps they made the right choice. And maybe one day, Mickey will too. Thanks for watching, Tonglers. Remember to like and subscribe for more exclusive Tongle content. And if you're a creator, be sure to visit the Tongle website at tongle.com for some exciting opportunities.